go. All right, we're going to talk today about the French Revolution. We've been talking about the Enlightenment period, and last week we talked about how the Enlightenment movement affected the American Revolution. Remember, the Enlightenment period was all about the philosophers. It was about political philosophy, social philosophy, about religion, about science, about everything in society. A lot of the things that we talked about last week had to do with uh, John Locke and life, liberty, and property, and our Declaration of Independence with life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We talked about the general will, uh, Rousseau's theories. We talked about um, uh, the, the U.S. Constitution and the separation of powers coming from the philosophies of Montesquieu. We talked about um, the Bill of Rights and our basic rights, our basic freedoms, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, coming a lot from uh, Voltaire and others as well, and how the American Revolution was an enlightened revolution. And today I'm going to talk to you about how the French Revolution was also an enlightened revolution. You remember the philosophers, most of them were French anyway, okay? So after our revolution, the French, who helped us in our revolution, the French government did, and the French king, the French people kind of looked at our revolution and looked at all their philosophers and stuff that was going on, and they, they had their own revolution. So I'm going to try to set the stage up for what was going on uh, at that time. So over here, <clears throat> our lesson essential question, how did the Enlightenment influence the French Revolution? So there's going to be some similarities there. A lot of people read the philosophers, okay? A lot of French people read the philosophers, a lot of French the new middle class, and one of the things we talk about all year long is the expansion of the middle class. In France, the, the new middle class read a lot about the philosophies. Um, the new middle class was, the, uh, was also the new wealthy. These were the people, these were the women that had salon meetings in their homes and talked about the uh, philosophers. But they also realized the French government, the French king, was not really an enlightened ruler, okay? And... Um, so that would, that would lead to revolution, okay? Now, real quick, the basic revolution here, this is a basic theory of the revolution, or excuse me, a basic theme or creed of the revolution. Liberty, equality, fraternity. Fraternity is another word for brotherhood, okay? So liberty, equality, and brotherhood. When, before the French Revolution, there wasn't this equality, there wasn't this liberty, um, there was a big difference between the men who had all the money in the land and the church and everybody else. And they were separated into three estates. Now, at the beginning of the school year, we talked about uh, how our social structure today is with upper class, middle class, working class. We call that, uh, you know, that's our social structure. Okay, so we've got a, a small group of people in the upper class. We like to have a big middle class. And we also have a pretty big working class. But the great thing about our country is you can work hard and move up from the working class to the middle class. And, if, you know, you can move up from the middle class to the upper class. But back in pre-France, pre-revolutionary France, you couldn't move in their social structure. It was a legal social structure. And this French Revolution changed that legal social structure to something more like what we have, what we have now, um, with more, uh, more equality and all that. So let me show you this over here on the board. There were three estates in France. These were legal. This wasn't just something you could move in and out of. All right? The first estate was the clergy. This was the church. They had less than 1% of the population, but they owned 10% of the land. Just think about that, okay? 10% of all the land of France was owned by the Catholic Church. That's a lot. I know we have a lot of churches around here, but I'm pretty sure if you add up all of our church land all over Limestone County, it's not going to add up to 10%. That was a huge chunk of land. And they got plenty of money from the people that paid their tithe to the church, but they didn't pay any taxes. That was the first estate. Second estate, these were the nobles. These were, these were nobles. These were aristocrats. Let me go ahead and add that right here. Nobles, they were the aristocrats. They were the guys that their dads were in charge before them and their dads before them. These were the lords of the land, the guys that worked in the government. They had lots of money and they had a lot of the land. Not all the land, but they had a lot of the land. They were kind of like that top 2% that we've talked about before. They didn't pay any taxes. 
Then came the third estate. Now the third estate was everybody else. The third estate was about 97% of the population. So pretty much everybody in France was in the third estate. Okay. <clears throat> These were poor peasants. About 80% of them were poor peasants. But you also had this new middle class, which became known as the bourgeoisie. This brand new middle class were merchants, lawyers, doctors, um, all of the trade that was going on. We've talked about going back all the way to the spice trade and then colonies, all of that. These were the bourgeoisie. These were the new people that had money. Okay? And these were the original group that really drove the revolution, the bourgeoisie. Right? Now, <clears throat> the key, the, uh, there's a lot of keys to the French Revolution. And I'll just let you know the French Revolution was not a clean revolution. It started off with the bourgeoisie pushing the Enlightenment philosophies. And then all of a sudden, the poor people thought, hey, this is a great idea for us to take over. And so the poor people in the church and cut people's heads off and the reign of terror and all that. Um, the French Revolution was a scary time to be alive because you never knew who was going to try to kill you because it was real easy to kill somebody. All you had to do was say they were an enemy of the revolution and you're dead. All right, so... Leading into the revolution, you had these three estates. Okay? Stop it for just a second. 